Good morning and uh, welcome to the series of uh, anesthesia lectures on epidural anesthesia. We are going to deal with part one today and the first thing what I want to stress is we call it as epidural and there are certain other terms like peridural and extradural. Are they the same? Yes. Just because the epidural comes with the tongue. Yes, fine. If you go to the history of epidurals, it was started in 1885 by Carning and is an uptake of drugs by spinal cord injections can produce anesthesia. Now we are more than 100 years. Really in 1913, she started tried paramedian approach. Pages in 1921 said it is a field which declares that we are in the epidural space. Dogliotti and Gutierrez in 1939 described fundamental actions and results for the first time. And Tuhi in 1945, see this, how many decades ago, Cleland produced in obstetrics. Now uh, in the 1950s, just because we got so many neuromuscular blockers, epidural slightly went out of, into the shade to come back in the 1990s. Now what are the prime uses of epidurals? Surgical anesthesia, labor analgesia, post-operative pain relief, chronic pain relief, and epidural blood patch. These are all the prime five uses of epidural anesthesia and analgesia. There are how many vertebrae? There are 24 individual vertebrae, 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, and 5 fused sacral vertebrae and coccyx made of 3 to 5 rudimentary vertebrae. Not all always classed as being part of the vertebral cloud. Now you can see here this is the vertebra, this is the pedicle, this is the superior articular process. Here you can see superior articular process in the lateral view. This is the lamina. This is the, what is this? This is the vertebral frame. See the vertebral frame. The inferior articular process, superior articular process, transverse process, fine. Okay, now we go this, this picture. Now the superior, here what you can see is the intervertebral frame. Here what you can see is the vertebral frame. What is the vertebral canal through which the spinal cord flows here? But here it is the intervertebral frame or the vertebral notch. Here you can see this in the sidewards. This is what we need to be very clear. The interlaminar space is triangular and becomes more circular in flexion. The inferior articular process is being pulled up. So that is one of the uses of patient becoming more flexed. I'm a position, let me get flexed the patient. So what is the use of flexion? If somebody asks, it is not only the interspinal space, the interlaminar space, which is triangular, becomes more roomy and more circular in flexion. The gap in the ligamentum flavum is more in the thoracic. That is why we need to go paramedian. Not only the, again, where the spines are very sharp here, but also the ligamentum flavum has got some defects in the thoracic. So more of paramedian approach. Now we can see here, this is what, this is the spine, this is the spine, we are going here, we are going here, this is lumbar. Now here the spine is like this, how can we go here? Now we may need to go in the paramedian approach in the thoracic. That is what is the difference between this lumbar epidurals where the spines, there is a clear interspinous gap. Now interlaminar is different, there is a clear interspinous gap, the interspinous gap is less here. Now the vertebral body, the ligamentum flavum, there is maybe a gap here. This is the epidural fat. The ligamentum, ligament may not fuse. The thickness may be 2 to 5 millimeters and it is thickest in the lumbar. It prevents injury to the disc and it stretches during flexion, becomes thin in extreme flexion. This is what we should know. Spinal, if you want to give spinal, yes, 
extreme fraction is okay. But if you want to give epidural, you cannot not put the patient like this. Extreme flexion may sometimes make the ligament and flavum to become thinner so that this accidental dural puncture may be common if you do an extreme flexion. Behind, signs behind, sometimes an extreme flexion. If you don't get this, feel of the ligament and flavum is very important. So, approach from the paramedian or median, whatever it is, you get to have the feel of the ligament and flavum. The thick supraspinous ligament may confuse in obese patient. Obese patient la, 5 centimeters only the supraspinous ligament will be. So the interspinous ligament is loose. So there will be a lot of gives. We will be putting the catheter here. So get the feel of the ligament of flavum and then attach your so called LOR. This will come in the next slides. Now what are the boundaries of the epidural space? What is above? Foramen magnum, the periosteal and spinal layers of dura fuse, which is the classical teaching. Below, the sacrococcygeal membrane. Laterally, this is the, here we can see this is the epidural space. Anterior, posterior longitudinal ligament, vertebral bodies, and intervertebral Anterior is, see, we are going from posterior. We should understand what is anterior is the posterior longitudinal ligament, vertebral body, and intervertebral disc. What is posterior is ligament of flavum and lamina. So, laterally, don't tell dura is anterior. Anterior is posterior longitudinal ligament, pedicles and intervertebral phenomena. Now, we can see here again boundaries. Now, we are going here. This is the ligament of flavum. If we go here, from here, see here, this is the intervertebral disc. This is the, because your epidural space is circular from here. There is a posterior epidural space. There is an anterior epidural space. That is why the epidural space is circular. That is why the anterior, anterior boundary is the posterior longitudinal ligament. Now we can see this is the epidural space full. Here we can see this is the dura. If you go here, this is the vertebra, disc and the longitudinal ligament which is anterior. Now we see here this is the posterior epidural space, ligament of flavum. This is posterior longitudinal ligament which is anterior to the epidural space. I am not totally concerned with the anterior longitudinal ligament. There is nowhere near it. Now the distance from the dura to the ligament of flavor. And now we are pricking the ligament of flavor. We should not prick the dura. We should prick the ligament of flavor and enter into the epidural space without pricking the dura. How much we have? Lumbar, we have 5 to 6 millimeters. Red thoracic, we have 3. Cervical, we have only 2 millimeters. This is what we should understand. Sir, sir, if you change the needle here or there like this, yes, we are likely to puncture the dura. What are the contents of the epidural space? Fat, blood vessels and nerve roots. Fat is an important pharmacological space. It acts as a depot for drugs and obese and more capacious epidural space. This is about the importance of fat in the epidural space. Now we have fat, blood vessels and nerve roots. Vessels or intersegmental arteries mainly laterally. That is what is advantage. More in the anterior. They are segmental, valveless, sluggish movements. Very important here. They are more laterally and more anterior. So from posterior if you go, the vessels are little less and less likely to puncture unless we are dealing with pregnant patients. Now you see here, from here there is less, only anterior and lateral. If you go posterior into the epidural space, the vascularity is less. Now the different epidural spaces, cervical, fusion of the spinal, yes, we know, thoracic, C7 to L1, L1 to S1, and sacral is S1 to sacrococcygeal membrane. The dural sac ends at approximately S2. 
It contains the spinal cord and the cardiac. Spinal nerves in pairs. There may be some lymphatics. There may be some connective tissue folds or median fold may be there. Sometimes it may cause segmental or unilateral epidurals. The spinal cord in its contents have their own innervation. Anterior dura is heavily innervated. Fortunately for spinal, the posterior dura is sparsely supplied. The periosteum is pain sensitive, but the ligamentum flavum is not. Very important. The ligamentum flavum is not painful. So don't give local, local, local and going on to loosen your ligamentum flavum in the ligamentum flavum so that your loss of resistance technique becomes little confusing. So don't give local into the ligamentum flavum because the ligamentum flavum has not much of pain fibers. Unless you hit the periosteum, patient will not have pain. Now you see supraspinous ligamentum, ligamentum epidural space, ligamentum flavum and all these things which contains fat, blood vessels and nevros. Now we have interlaminar that is the usual method of resistance, loss of resistance, transforaminal, transsacral, spinal endoscopy, paravachapral. This is not for today's discussion. Interlaminar is this what is going to talk about. Now we have a 4 millimeter wide space. Epidural space is how much wide? 4 millimeters. That has to be located from a 4 centimeter depth from the skin. It has got no obvious end point, no CSF leak, no blood leak, nothing. So we need to be like this. An epidural analgesia is most often performed in the lumbar region. But thoracic epidural blocks are there technically more difficult. Because of great triangulation, marked overlapping of the spinous process. The potential risk of spinal cord injuries. Because if you puncture below L1 epidural space, your risk of spinal cord injury is less. But if you go above, it is very little more dangerous. That is what we should know whenever you are taking the risk of putting the needle at L1, L2. The risk is there and the segmental thing is not there. So I don't prefer L1. L2. So we will go into the next, the same thing in the next class. Now we can see cord cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. The space here is little more. This is coming especially from T3 to T7. It is very difficult to put even for an expert. See here, T3 to T7 is very much. After T7, T8, there is a slight gap. So go paramedian. And we can go slide here. Why is epidural pressure negative? Dural tenting and coning. Negative intrathoracic pressure. Recumbent position. See, these are all the possible theories given for epidural pressure negativity. Now, if you go on to prick this, now you have a two guinea ring. So, you, this is what is called coning. You cone it. And there is a negative pressure here. This is the ligamentum flavor. You press the ligament, go ahead of the ligamentum flavor. You cone that dura, then you have a negative pressure. This is what is called a coning and a possible negative pressure. Another thing is about the negative intrathoracic pressure coming here. Another is about, about the position when we have. See the negative intrathoracic pressure sometimes may be going on to this epidural space. Now, if you want to do a summary of things, yes, we know history, conning started is anatomy and space. Where is it? For example, cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. Anterior boundary, posterior boundary. Lateral, above, low. Above is fusion of, in the, in the what is that? We are periosteal and distinct fuse. The foramen sacral. The Lower is about this, inferior is about the sacrococcygeal membrane. Anterior is about the posterior longitudinal ligament, the disc and the vertebra. Posterior is the ligamentum fiber. We prick the ligamentum fiber, that is posterior. We are going from posterior. Then we go into the epidural space. Lateral is, we know, intervertebral foramen. 
So the sites of entry is cervical, thoracic, lumbar. We know the causes of negative pressure. Because of coning, because of thoracic space, transmitted to the epidural space, and because of different postures.